Hey, Vinyl Community, Mark here again from Sound Matters with another video. Today, we're talking about the weird and wonderful world of run-out groove messages. These are messages or scribings that are etched into the dead wax of your records. And here in my hand, I have a record that was mastered by the mastering engineer that kind of inadvertently, I suppose, kind of kick-started the tradition. We're going to take a look at some of the weird and wonderful messages that are out there in my collection. And then I'd like to hear from you about some of the messages that you've noticed etched into the dead wax of the records in your collection too. So traditionally, that space between the end of the record and the label, the runout groove or the dead wax, is usually a pretty benign space. You might find a matrix number, maybe a few digits referring to the kind of particular copy of the record that you've got. If you're lucky, there might be a signature of the mastering engineer that cut the lacquers. But occasionally, if you're lucky, you look a little bit closer and you might find some pretty unusual scribings and messages in this space. So over the years, mastering engineers and artists have on occasion used this space to kind of insert weird and wonderful messages, sometimes inside jokes, really bizarre kind of etchings that obviously mean something to the people who did it, or maybe they don't. You know, I've even seen some circumstances whereby random initials have made it on there next to the mastering engineer's traditional kind of signature. So who knows what kind of weird and wonderful messages are, are hidden out there in terms of the records and what they mean. Now, the original prankster in terms of this concept is said to be the legendary mastering engineer Graham Peckham, who regularly started signing his records off with his nickname Porky, or sometimes he'd write a Porky Prime cut. One such record is this one from T-Rex called Electric Warrior, which has Porky scribed into the dead wax of one side. Now, Graham Peckham eventually started taking this one step further with kind of witty jokes and remarks, often based on the lyrics of the album. One particularly eccentric example is on Elvis Costello's album, his second album here, and I'll just read from the feature I did on this topic a little while back on the website here. It said on the A side of the record, it said, special pressing number three, ring Myra on 434-3232 for your special price. So allegedly the number and the contact was actually real. So as you can imagine, this joke wore pretty thin at the press office after a while. So although Graham Peckham is perhaps the most famous example of etching eccentric nicknames into the dead wax of records, he was by no means the only person to be doing so, particularly during this period of music history. A couple of other notable examples that often get confused between each other because they're very similar are Bo Bill, who was Bob Hill, the legendary Trident Studios mastering engineer, and then there's Bilbo, who was Dennis Blackham, an IBC Studios mastering engineer. Now apparently Dennis was reading a lot of JR. Tolkien at the time and settled on Bilbo as his marker if you like. Now interestingly you see this etching on the T-Rex single Hot Love and that's kind of interesting because of course Mark Bolan was also a big J.R. Tolkien fan inspired by him himself as well. So just to wrap this video up then I'm just going to reel off over at the website some of the findings from my own collection in terms of Deb Wax messages. So back to that kind of like artist-led messages. Sometimes it can be the mastering engineer as well but often and it's the artist who wants to put a message into the dead wax. Now, perhaps some of the most famous examples of this um, actually come from the band The Smiths. Now, this is perhaps no surprise, really, because Morrissey has always taken inspiration from literature, so it's no wonder that he perhaps wanted to expand that to the actual physical medium as well. Now, on my copy of The uh, Smiths, The Queen is Dead, it says, Fear of Manchester, them was rotten days. But as I say, the Smiths were pretty prolific in this practice, so through their catalogue there's plenty of other examples. If we look at the 1986 single Ask, it reads on the A side, Are You Loathsome Tonight? And then on the B side it says, Tomb It May Concern. And then of course there's the hit William It Was Really Nothing from 1984, which... I can only imagine is referencing uh, Oscar Wilde. It says on the A side, it says the importance of earnest. And then on the B side, it says romantic and square is hip and aware. 
Next up, we got an example from John Frusciante. Now, regular subscribers or readers of Sound Matters will know that I'm a huge John Frusciante fan, and I spent years trying to find an original copy of Curtains on vinyl, but unfortunately, I missed out. Now, when it was repressed in 2019, I snapped up a copy of this and was very pleased to see that there was a beautifully positive message etched into the dead wax. This was cut by Bernie Grudman, who's obviously a, a superb mastering engineer, and it says on the there it says stamp where you stand on the A side and then on the B side it says a million ways things could be. If any of you are Radiohead fans and you've got a copy of OK Computer there's plenty of eccentric ramblings in here for you to explore starting of course with the way the records are actually numbered so instead of A, B, C and D each side reads eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Typical eccentric Radiohead in my view and I just love that but the etchings in the records themselves are really evocative of the kind of dystopian kind of imagery of the modern world that the album kind of um, portrays. I think they're very evocative and powerful. Though You've got on side A to side B, I'll just read these out, you've got I like you, you are a wonderful person. Then side B, I'm full of enthusiasm, I'm going places. And then on side C, I'll be happy to help you. And then on side D, I'm an important person, would you like to come home with me? couple of other examples just to wrap things up then. Why don't you trade those guitars for shovels? If you can find a copy of Love Buzz by Nirvana, difficult single to find of course, this is apparently what Kurt's father used to shout at them whilst they were practicing at their Aberdeen home there. So it's etched into that record, an interesting kind of just remark from, I guess, you know, 90s musical history. And then we've got the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Freaky Starly, which says, For Sly with Love. It's no secret that the Red Hot Chili Peppers are big funk and soul fans, and when they did Freaky Starly, they did a cover version of Sly and the Family Stones, If You Want Me To Stay. In my view, really nice version of it, but they paid homage to them by putting this etching into that particular record. So this one's interesting from Led Zepp's third offering. I think it's no secret that Robert Plant and Jimmy Page were heavily influenced by mythology and the occult during their kind of prolific years. And on the third offering, the the engineer Terry Manning inscribed the quotes that I'll read out here from the occultist and black magician Alistair Crowley. It says, so mota be it, and then do what thou wilt. So there are so many examples from music history of this process, too many to cover in a single video. Let me know your ones down in the comments below, the ones that you've discovered from your collection. But just to round off, I want to briefly touch on Jack White's Lazaretto, which of course was released in 2014 and had a whole bunch of in some ways kind of slightly gimmicky features about it but it had one side that played from back to front it had a hologram on one of the labels and in the dead wax it had secret tracks hidden inside the label it had different intros on one track depending on where you dropped the records down on the groove and eventually the grooves would meet up and, uh, and join to the rest of the song there were so many different things they did with the format it just demonstrated what you can do with a physical format to make it interesting and in, in homage if you like to every Everything that they threw at that record, they etched kitchen sink into the dead wax of the record, which I think was a nice touch. And again, another hidden message inside a record. So that concludes today's video. Thank you ever so much for watching. I just love some of these messages that are etched into the dead wax of records, and it just shows what you can do with a physical format. We've lost so much of this creativity in the digital realm, particularly in the world of streaming, that kind of what you can do with the magic of format, the creativity that can be applied to the art form. I love it so much. Just let us know what um, Run Out Groove messages you've seen in your collection down in the comments below. There's so many out there, impossible to cover in one video, but I want to hear from you down in the comments below what some of your favorite weird and wonderful messages are that you've seen in your collection if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing and we'll see you in that next video keep spinning